Greetings everybody, my name is Tommy the Keyblade Master and welcome to my channel. Now, this week uh, Microsoft has updated the Xbox One with the new OS and has some new backwards compatibility. I went in and decided to test a few things on the backwards compatibility side and just to see how well it ran and just to see if it did everything like Microsoft told us it would work and to see what my verdict would be. Now, I will say that the new update does do what they did say. It's a lot faster to scroll through these menus to get what you want and to load stuff up. The original Xbox One UI was based around Kinect. You were supposed to use gestures. You were supposed to use voice activation. However, no one wanted the damn camera. And when Microsoft pulled it about a year ago to lower the price so they could actually compete with their competitors, it left most people who were using controllers a little flustered. Now that that's gone and we have this nice OS, I'm going to enjoy it. Now on to the backwards compatibility. Okay, right now I'm going to bring up a video of me accessing my past games library. They all appear here. Everyone that's games that I have bought digitally that is Xbox One backwards compatible appear here. When I hit A, I can choose to download the game and then I have to wait for it to install. Now this can take a while. If it's a big retail game like Assassin's Creed, it's going to take about as long to install on the Xbox One as it did on the Xbox 360. And I discovered that the hard way too while downloading some of these games. There's no ready to launch feature with these backwards compatible games. I'm not going to criticize that. It doesn't surprise me at all. But anyways, once it's done installing, if you click on the game and launch it, it takes a few seconds longer to launch than an Xbox One game and it does load up the Xbox 360 starter screen. After that, you're kind of thrown into this odd environment. It's 50% Xbox 360, 50% Xbox One. Basically, the way the achievements look, the way your friends appear, and any messages that appear in any text boxes that open have an Xbox 360 feel to them. However, hitting the home button closes the screen and it allows you to go into other areas if you want to snap stuff to the game so you can record or stream to Twitch. You're now allowed to do that with these games. I think it's a great feature. Another good feature, although it doesn't happen automatically for most games, is that if you do have Xbox Live Gold and have cloud storage, you can go back to your Xbox 360 and upload these games to the cloud and have your save footage waiting for you whenever you start your Xbox One. So you have all your save files. You don't have to lose them. You don't have to bother getting a thumb drive and physically copying them. It can go automatically through the cloud. That's a great feature. As far as the starting lineup goes, again, I have a few niche titles that I hope we see soon, like Tales of Vesperia, and there's a few games on this list that I don't think I would touch with a five-foot pole, like Blood of the Werewolf. I already told you about that game. It's not a terrible game, exactly, but it's people just wanting to be old school and not understanding old school games and it just flopped in my personal opinion. But overall I think this backwards compatibility in this new OS will really help Microsoft. Do I think they'll be able to beat Sony? No, but I think Sony might want to consider ways of getting people who have already bought stuff on the PS3, especially digitally. One of the things I did see about all these games listed here, most of them are digital only and not retail. And Sony needs to start thinking about that too. Games that I purchased digitally on a console, I should be able to take with me to the next console. I don't say that out of necessarily selfishness, but because I don't have that disc anymore, it can mean that these games will be easily lost if they're not able to transfer. And I can't sell them with the console anyways. I sell the console, I lose the games, and I don't think that's right. But anyways, I think this is a great step forward. Again, not every game will be available. I already did a video with a list of top five games I'm going to miss from the Xbox 360 because they won't come to the Xbox One. So I've already done that too. I'll add in a card. 
But anyways, I like to thank Microsoft. I think this update is great. I think it will lead to better sales. And I think it's going to be just a lot of fun playing my old Xbox 360 games. There's a few games I got for free or I purchased digitally for dirt cheap prices that I haven't touched yet, like Borderlands, that I'm going to enjoy playing on my Xbox One. Anyways, this is Tommy the Keyblade Master asking you if you have any comments on this video to feel free to leave them down below. I enjoy talking to people who have comments on my videos, and so I'm signing out now. See you later!